The objective of coming here was to discuss Waiatira Hill Country, typical sort of country that was redeveloped in the 1950s and 60s and on which farmers were settled. Now, while we're not at Waiatira, we're on a particular soil type, Waiatira clay loam, and that soil type has a problem with tunnel gullies. And as you can see, um, just behind us here, you can see how the ground has dropped and further down the valley, there's a series of hollows. Now, before the planting started on this property, there would have been a row of uh, holes. They could be five, three to five meters apart or further. And you wouldn't even know that there was a tunnel underneath it until the surface dropped through. And that might be when a cattle beast walked over it or a farmer drove a tractor over it. And so these things were a serious threat to farming on this sort of country. Surveys in the 1970s suggested that they could be costing the farmers five to 10% of their cattle per year, or cattle and sheep per year, falling down those holes, particularly young lambs, young calves dropping in those holes. What has happened is that the water flows down through the soil profile, through below what you can see there, uh, until it reaches a clay layer, and then it runs along that clay layer down the slope. And in running down that slope, it cuts out a tunnel. And that tunnel, each time it rains, water runs down, it enlarges, and eventually the top starts dropping through. It doesn't just cause that sort of erosion. Eventually those tunnels will open out into an open gully, and so we'll get a big rift down the hillside. But that will then, even with the tunnels, will remove support from the hillsides on either side, and we get the land moving down into that, into that gully. And so not only was this land suffering from these holes and tunnels, but the land is actually moving down the hillside. And so fences, airstrips, um, any, any infrastructure was at risk of being damaged by these large earth slides. Some of them uh, flowed fast enough that it made it difficult to farm. What happened in this particular case uh, in uh, 1966, uh, I was approached by the landowners, um, the Davis Collie family, and we discussed planting poplars and willows to control uh, this sort of erosion. Firstly, because they're easy to plant. They can be planted as poles, three metre uh, long poles, can be planted in the holes. Um, they grow very easily from those poles. You didn't need to remove the stock from the paddocks, although they would cut back on the, the cattle numbers, uh, but you could quite easily grow them in the presence of animals. They, as a mature tree, while they cast a bit of shade in the summer, in the winter it's clear, the grass gets away, they return nutrients to the soil, they bring nutrients from deeper down and drop it onto the soil surface. So in combination with pasture, it doesn't affect your pastoral production, it controls the erosion. In fact, there is an argument that it increases production because you're bringing those extra nutrients back. So it was a system that uh, we know works. It's worked elsewhere in the country with poplars and willows. And so we were fairly confident it would work here. We drew up a plan for the property that covered about 10 years work. Uh, in those 10 years, uh, the, the Davis Collies would plant uh, one or two paddocks a year. And as well as doing that planting for that year, they would look after the previous year's plantings. And so they would blank up where any had died or were damaged. As the trees matured, they pruned them thinned them, uh, kept the light coming through, selected any trees that looked as though they had potential for timber and good straight trees and they were carefully pruned up uh, to keep their form and to give clear timber. Probably more than anything else this is an area where we haven't been as successful as we would have hoped because not every farmer did that 
um, pruning and thinning of their trees. And so you will see properties now where um, they had a very good strike initially, the trees grew, did the job, uh, controlled the erosion, but um, because they didn't then uh, prune and thin, they've started to suppress the pasture underneath, they're far too dense, uh, and they're not getting the, the sort of timber trees they would have hoped for. They're also having trees fall over and die, and so um, there's a bit of a mess on some properties simply because they didn't get that subsequent management. Uh, and that's why this particular property, they have been well managed. These ones in front of us, they've taken a few trees out because this appears to be under control. Uh, if necessary, they will replant because uh, in the next paddock over, they have logged that area and they've gone back in and replanted where they need to. And again, it would simply be uh, poles at sort of five to 10 meter spacings in the, in the valley bottom.